Good day everyone, I am Angel Subalvaro, a student nurse from LPUSC School of Health Sciences Inc. And for today, I will be performing bed bath. Now what is bed bath? Bed bath is a bath performed in a bed given to a client who isn't able to bath himself or herself. Now the purposes of bed bath, number one of course is to clean the client's body from germs or any other bacteria that may foster in their skin. Second is to stimulate circulation and improve general muscular tone and joint. Third, of course, is to give them comfort and help them go to sleep. And lastly, number four is to observe skin condition or any other objective symptoms. So in performing bed bath, we are guided by the following guidelines. First is to confirm doctor's order because sometimes the bath order may have changed. Also, we need to check the client's identification and condition. This is because in some instances, giving a bad bath may be harmful to a client who is in pain, hemorrhaging, or weak. The next thing that we have to do is to greet our client and also establish rapport. We need to ask them about their personal hygiene preferences and their ability to assist with the procedure. So good day everyone, this is Nurse Angel and so for today I will be performing bed bath. So for the initial procedure, first I have to greet the client and also validate some information about him or her. So in validating information, we have to observe the wristband of our client and also um, ask the client to state his or her um, name and also birthdays. So good day, I am Nurse Angel. May you please state your name and your birthday for me, please? My name is Andrea P. Bao. I'm sorry for the Okay, so hi Teo, I'm Nurse Angel. How are you? I'm good. Okay, good. So today I will be performing that for you. So I will be cleaning your body while you are in bed. Okay. okay, so why do you think that we have to perform this procedure on you? Yes, very good. Because I will be cleaning your uh, your body from the germs and other bacteria that may foster on your skin. Also, the reason why we uh, do bed bath is to improve your circulation so that your blood will flow perfectly in your body. And also, uh, we perform bed bath to provide you comfort and also help you go to sleep. Right? So, um, can you help me uh, in performing this procedure? Okay, good. Okay. So, after establishing report, we need to uh, prepare all the equipments that we need for bed bath. So, I have all my so uh, we need to remember that prior to performing bed bath, we need to perform proper hand hygiene, of course, and also don our gloves, but this is optional. Donning gloves is optional, but it is a must when performing perineal and anal care. So let us begin. Okay, so after donning our gloves, we are also reminded a few more things. So if there are any curtains or any doors here, we need to close them in order to provide warmth and privacy to our patient. With that, we will now proceed with the next step. And the next step is to get our basin, which is two thirds full of water, and we need to um, let our client check the temperature of the water if it is tolerable for them. So today, kindly uh, put your hands in here and I'll leave it Can you move a little bit at the side, please? So after we have covered our client with the blanket, we may now proceed to remove the pillow and also put the big towel under his head and also uh, a towel over his chest. Over his 
So after the initial procedure, we may now proceed to cleaning the eyes of our patient, making sure that we do not do so as it may irritate the eyes. So we want to clean the eyes of our patient from inner surface to outer surface using different sides of the cloth. This is to avoid sweeping debris to the eyes of our client and also to avoid the spread of infection. Now let us proceed. So now I'm going to wash the eyes of my client from inner surface to outer surface and using different sections of the cloth. Now we can proceed to cleaning the face of our patient. So in cleaning the face of our patient, we can use soap only if they preferred it. Remember that soap is drying to the face. We may also follow the number three pattern. So from the forehead going to the nose, and from the nose going to the chin. We may also want to include the ears of our patient as well as their neck. So, we... so, so now we can proceed to washing the face of our client from forehead up to the neck. So after cleaning the face of our patient, we may now proceed to the upper limb. So in cleaning the upper limb, we can now do so. We also need to do our long strokes as long strokes stimulate circulation by facilitating venous return. In cleaning the upper limb, we also want to start from the distal to the proximal. So from your head up to your axilla. Now I want to remind all of you that while I was performing, bed back on my client, the bed was already close to the wall. Hence, I cannot go to the other side of the bed to do the other arm. But you need to be reminded that the same procedure will be performed to the other arm of the client, the same thing that you did to the first arm. So now we are going to proceed to washing the uh, upper extremities of our client. So we are going to wash the arms from uh, distal to proximal, so from the hands up to the axilla. So now we may proceed to washing the excellent of our client. So we would want to repeat the same procedure for the other arm, but since the bed is already at that side and I can't go around it, I will just tell you that we need to, uh, we need to perform the same procedure on the other arm. Now that we're done with the upper limb, we can now proceed to cleaning the chest and the abdomen of our client. So one thing to remember here is of course to put the back towel under the trunk of our client so that we may avoid wetting the bed and also put the back towel over his or her chest so that we may be able to provide the privacy that our client needs. And so after performing this procedure, we can also change the water that we are using for bed bathing. Number one is because it might have cooled down already, and the second one is because it might have been clean. So before proceeding to the next step, which is uh, cleaning the lower limb, we can first uh, change the water that we are using.
that we're done cleaning the chest and the abdomen of our patient and we already changed the water that we are using, we can now proceed to the lower limb. So in cleaning the lower limb, we have to bend the knees of our client. This will allow us to have easier access to the top leg and also to the bottom part of the leg. Also, um, if necessary, we have to provide pillow or cushion underneath the knee so that we may be able to provide support. In cleaning the legs of our patient, we also want to start from distal to proximal. So from the foot of our patient to the knee, and from the knee to the upper leg of our patient. So again, I would like to remind everyone that when I was performing this bed bath, the bed was already close to the wall, hence I cannot go around the bed in order to clean the other leg of my client. But what you have to do here is, what you did with the first leg, you just have to repeat it in cleaning the other leg. So now, let us begin. We are going to wash the lower extremities of our client again from this stuff to proximal, so from the feet to the um, to the legs. Okay, after cleaning the lower limbs of our patient, we may now proceed to cleaning their back and their buttocks. So the first thing that we have to do here is to turn them on a lateral position. This allows us to have easier access and visualization of their back. So if the client isn't able to assist us in doing this procedure, the first thing that we have to do is to bend their knees and then turn them into a lateral position, making sure that we are gentle in every move that we make. The next thing that we have to do is to observe for any skin indications as skin breakdowns commonly occurs over bony areas. So we have to also be careful in cleaning the sacral area of our client. And also, if ever needed by the client, we may also perform back rubbing. And so after performing all the steps in bed bathing, we have to make sure that the client is comfortable before taking them. After this, we may now document the procedure.